what about that firebrand, bro? That there was a dragon, sir. <laughs> Good thing they were wearing the brown pants, because dang, that boy was thick. You know what I think one of the funniest things about that was, was listening to the comments of Steven when, when they're running down that, that final corridor after they get off that platform, right? And they're running down this corridor, and then you see the, the AI, or AI, the UI come across a screen that just says, you know, uh, a dragon has appeared or something like that. And Steven's like, oh, a dragon? And then they get to the end. They get to the end of this walkway and you see the thing like coming and he's like, I don't see it. I don't see it. And then it lands and he wants to talk to it. <laughs> he goes, can we, can we talk to it? Can we commune? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you go right ahead, boss. <laughs> you just work your way right down to that dragon. But it did bring up, it did bring up a thought, bro. Mm. Do the dragons in Vera converse? like in Elder Scrolls fashion. I would say they do. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that they probably do. You know, when they were, when we were getting like little tidbits of lore throughout, you know, throughout the fight. And one of the things that popped up was the age of the dragon. And that this was, this was a youngster. Like this isn't even, this is not quote its final form. <laughs> yes. You know, it was a young red. Yeah. Yeah. And so I would, and, and I tell you what, truthfully, like, as the game grows post-launch, you know, like years down the road, that is an expansion I would love to see to get into the lore of the dragons themselves. And, you know, do they congregate? Do they talk? Because I tell you what, hats off to Kat and the team there. They nailed the intensity of that sound. I haven't felt that kind of intimidation since we jumped into Guild Wars 2 about two years ago and we saw that massive world boss, the dragon, you know, just like, I am helpless. Like I, 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 yes. had, I hadn't felt helpless and, until you see this again. And it was just, oh, it was great. Right. So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about like our initial thoughts on the appearance of the dragon when, when he first landed. First of all, when he flew in, I had thoughts immediately of those times in elsewhere in Elder Scrolls Online. Absolutely. Where, where those, or, or even Skyrim, right? When... The dragons were flying overhead. You could hear them from what from a ways off. And although we couldn't hear him, which I, I hope that changes in the future, because there was nothing more earth shatteringly bone jarring than to just be out and about adventuring. And then you just hear that screech, right? Yeah. Um, that was that was like some of the ultimate for me. But like, what were your what were your feelings when he when he finally landed and you got a look at the first ever dragon from Vera? Well, you know, it, it, I had questions going into it because I know they had shown a fight a long time ago. And I don't know if this was that same dragon now, like post three or four years through updates and development. So I didn't know, you know, like what I was going to be looking at. I was watching it in my living room because I love to watch those on the TV, you know, when you can watch it in 4K and you can get up close and see everything. And, but I shot up out of that. I felt like Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when he's sitting there in his recliner, he goes, and right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Except I love those memes, dude. <laughs> except I got up and yelled like, oh, oh, like you, the he, when he landed and you saw his big gnarly wings and it felt like Diablo met something else sinister entirely, you know, like just the presence and the sound, it just felt. And as the fight continued on, as it became very disorganized as sometimes as the fights do just from chaos, right? Like you're just trying to, to live, trying to kill and trying to live. And as that developed, you're seeing these moves that this thing is doing. And you're hearing the huge thuds and the, all the massive AOE from the fire. And it's just like, it felt to me, true, to put a cap on, on my, my point on this, it felt like the dra you could feel the dragon's weight, this physical weight in everything he did. Combine that with the music and it just felt right, man. Ooh. I'm so glad you mentioned music because we're going to get there. We are definitely going to get there. But I, I want to just give some initial thoughts on on my on the first appearance of the dragon and like how I felt. Um, 
to me, when as soon as he landed, and and even though they were in um, in almost like a bog area, it was uh, kind of a like a dank morass, kind of where he landed in the mud. Um, but you still see particles flying up as as he lands, and you feel that thud. And I could only imagine, like if you were actually there, what that thud would feel like. And the, the one of the biggest things that I can attribute it to is either, uh, well, two things: a flashbang. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it a little further than that. Um, when I was a kid, we used to go to the drags all the time and uh, and watch the the drag racers go down the track. And, and when you hear those things rumbling, it's in your chest. You're just like, oh, my, oh, is yeah. that going to like throw me into AFib? Um, because you feel that resonation in your chest. And that's only what I could imagine in my nerdy fantasy mind, how it would feel for a dragon to like truly land in front of you. So. Once he landed um, and I got a good look at him, like even though, even though Firebrand is a young red, right? You can see the 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 battle marks on him. I mean, there were there were holes in his wings. He looked damaged. He looked grizzled. So you got to think that, and it it would only, for the most part, be amongst the other dragons that are in that are in the world that he's battle hardened even already at a, at a young age, uh, just based off of his appearance alone. And he had these, he had those huge, uh, demonic horns that actually like came down like this. And that, that to me was very reminiscent of some of the dragon, uh, the aesthetics for your dragon riding in world of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. They have a whole bunch of those aesthetics where the horns just like come down, just like a freaking demon. I was like, whoa. Yeah, that looks really cool and really unique. Um, I thought his roars were were mighty, mm -hmm. very throaty. But I think I, I would hope that, you know, some of that in the far off distance, like I was saying earlier, when you're out there adventuring, that you would be able to hear them, especially if there's one in the area. That would just be such a cool thing right. to, to add. And then, like, what did you think of his behaviors when well, they were just kind of sitting there, you know? Oh, I loved his behaviors. You know, it's like he was scanning. It was like he was ever watching and the entire time. Like it, he put off this vibe of just watching them and seeing what they were going to do. He knew that they had their egg, right? He knew that something had, had, had happened. Um, maybe he didn't know. I don't know. But it just felt like he was trying to either guard the area or... I'm waiting for you to start this fight that you are not going to live from. Like he was playing with them, you know? And there was like this mis level of mysteriousness because that's the best part when you go into a fight blind, right? And because of the way that they had AI built into this, into the fight, it felt random at, at times. Like it really felt randomized on the way yeah. that he was choosing who he's fighting and his presence. And it just felt... Man, it just felt gnarly. Just big, battle hardened, like you're talking about. Very visceral feeling, very raw. It just, it was, that was a fight. Absolutely. Yeah, nothing seemed stale. Um, and, you know, they started to talk, they were going to start talking a little bit about mechanics in the video. And then they, they kind of pumped the brakes and went, nope, we're not going to spoil anything. Yeah. Uh, but they alluded to some really unique mechanics and, and you and I have both seen lots of mechanics from dragons over the years in games that we played. And, um, so just a few things, a few things like right off the bat that, that caught me was the fact that there were some very different mechanics here and then also some that were the same so like he had tail swipes he had these big sweeping claw swipes um of course the very iconic dragon breath that he that he was able oh. to put out um and then of course like no dragon is complete without leaping up into the air mid-fight and doing that freaking dragon strafe yeah oh yeah yeah, that's my. That was one of my favorite parts. It, and the movie was kind of cheesy looking back, and but Reign of Fire. Did you ever see that? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. This absolutely brought those those feelings of Big Daddy Dragon doing large strafing runs with fire and killing everything in sight. You know, it, it was just it felt powerful. He felt like he had power, and that's one thing that Ashes has been able to capture with him already. You know, if this is the same dragon that's you know went through updates. Or if it's something brand new, I don't know. However, 
they've captured power with this dragon, without a doubt. They did. And I actually, um, I, I was like slowing down the frames and stuff when I was watching. And he does this ground base uh, fire attack out of his out of his mouth. And if you look really close at it, you know how like when a dragon is kind of just talking to you and they're just about to light you the F up, right? <laughs> and they have, it's almost like that, that blue glow of a Bunsen burner when it's just about to go before that flame actually comes out and it turns red and orange and yellow, right? Mm -hmm. It's blue. Um, it's just that, that pure fuel that's coming out of them. That's, that's like ignited, but not fully out. So if you look real close at when he's spitting fire out of his mouth, you can see the hues of blue and almost like spittle coming out with it so it's it's almost like it's in liquid form before it ignites and it was such a an amazing touch to the aesthetic of how that dragon spits fire i was like whoa yeah like our team done real good on yeah that one. oh yeah yeah absolutely and that brings up another point you know with him being a red do blues fire out ice you know, is there something else entirely? Like, is is this elemental based? Do we do? Are we going to be dealing with like lightning of some sort? Like, what does this look like? How far does it go? And how far does it push? But overall, like, what did you think? We we we've seen dragons impact gaming in a big big way. Like you said, Skyrim. You know, um, movies. You know, like uh, Smog and and The Hobbit. You know, um, the list could go on and on. But overall, what is your take on Firebrand and what is the one thing that you can't wait to see when you fight him? Um, well, to harken back a little bit to his mechanics and, and the uniqueness of, of the mechanics, he had some things that like I had, I had never seen before. Um, one was like uh, he summoned fire elementals. There were he would put he was putting like dots of of uh, burning embers onto the ground that Steven loved to run through. It was freaking hilarious. <laughs> Although he was on invincible mode so he could heal and, yeah. and show off the, uh, show off the fight without dying. Um, and then um, he had this massive AOE flame ring that would just, that would just push out and push out and push out. So the mechanics was one thing I really did enjoy the mechanics and I can't wait to get into those mechanics and feel them as a ranged class myself as a ranger. Um, but I, I think some of the biggest things about Firebrand himself as being, you know, the, the, really the first introduction to a, dra a known dragon in Vera's universe is that, um, there's so much more to be discovered. And you mentioned it earlier with the mystique of dragons, um, in all of pop culture, that's, that's one it's, and it, it transcends games and, you know, it, it lands in books and other fantasy and it just, it blows my mind how every time you see a dragon, except for Puff, Puff Puff's, he's not that <laughs> scary, Puff the magic. But, but like when you think of, you know, you think of, um, uh, the movie that you just talked about. And then I think specifically, I think of, um, Parthenax. Oh yeah. In in Skyrim, I think of um I think of Bilbo running around looking for the Arkenstone and that dragon is that dragon is there and wakes up and so on top of the mystique, you get an air of doom mm. when you when a human or a mortal or or any of the races encounters a dragon alone. And even if you have a party with you. It is a sense of doom as if that dragon is toying with you and is always in control of whether you live or die, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, it always seems like taking down a dragon is an impossible task. Um, of course, unless you're a, the Dovahkiin with a bow, and <laughs> then it's actually pretty easy. But um, I, I got that sense of doom yeah. with, with this dragon. And, and the, the fact that they, I was really happy to see them join up with the Legion that was on their way to investigate that dragon's landing. And they joined up with them to make a 40 man raid group. It's like, that's old school, man. And that is, it brings such great feels to be able to see the first raid encounter is a 40 man raid. 
that was needed to take that dragon. I, I thought they were going to wipe a couple of times. I was like, wow, like this is, these are folks who've played the game and, and they, these are the folks who built the damn game. And um, to see them struggle a little bit was, was pretty cool.